Hi again, everybody. Welcome back to the Columbus School of Chinese Home Studios and another episode of Ask a Chinese Teacher. Today, I wanted to talk about yet another one of those sticking points for people coming to Mandarin from an English-speaking background, that being measure words or classifiers. You might have had a Chinese teacher tell you that whenever you're counting anything in Mandarin, you need to use a measure word in order to count it. So it just so happens that in English, we also have measure words. We just don't need to use them all the time. Things like rice. You can't say, I want two rice. Right? You have to say, I want a grain of rice or a bag of rice. Uh, other things like water. We need to specify how much of this water, some water, a body of water, uh, a cup of water, and the list goes on and on. These are called mass nouns to linguists. Some English nouns are mass nouns, some are counting nouns, and we don't need a measure word or classifier to count them. You can say two apples, but you cannot say too fun. Uh, you can say an hour of fun, a barrel of fun, but you need a measure word there to help you quantify things. In Mandarin, no matter what you're talking about, you have to use a measure word. So treat every noun like a mass noun in Chinese. If you're counting anything, if you have to give her a number of something, you're going to use some kind of measure word. So that being said, What's the issue? Well, number one, there's a ton of them. There are many dozens or maybe even hundreds, definitely many dozens commonly used measure words in Chinese. And you can't use them all for every situation. In fact, most of them are very specific. I actually have my grammar book from when I took a, a whole grammar course back at a, a Chinese university when I was an undergrad. And this gives 50 of the most commonly used measure words. Not the 50 most, 50 of the most. It's so hard to whittle down that they can only give you 50, along with uh, a list of nouns you can use for each one. So that's the difficult part, the sheer amount of measure words that there could possibly be. So how do you deal with this? Number one, there is a default measure word that you can always revert to if you can't think of a more specific one in real time. That default measure word is ge, all right? You have definitely heard ge being thrown around if you've had any classroom time learning Chinese. Ge counts the most stuff, and it just kind of works as a fill-in for whenever you can't think of a more specific measure word. Yi ge ping guo. You might have heard yi ge ping guo, wait, one apple? That gets used so much more than a more specific, more formal measure word for apples, yi ke ping guo. So what are some more specific measure words? Let's go with the one for animals. Yi zhi, yi zhi mao, zhe li you yi zhi mao, right? Zhi is what you can use for most animals. Keep in mind, that's just for most animals. Other animals, for example, long slender ones, like fish or snakes or dragons, there's a separate one. So this, again, goes back to what makes measure words challenging for uh, someone coming into Chinese. One more you'll run into a lot, zhang. Zhang is the measure word for relatively rectangular, approximately flat things, okay? So pieces of paper we count with zhang, yi zhang zhi. Mattresses we count with zhang, yi zhang chuang. Also tickets, yi zhang piao, and yi zhang zhuozi. Right, this is a relatively rectangular thing, yi zhang zhuozi. Even circular tables we can count using zhang. So I hope this kind of gives you an idea for how measure words work. The strategy, number one, is to always revert back to ge if you can't think of something more specific. But uh, perhaps even a better strategy is you need to be patient. You need to have the patience to get more and more exposure to start developing concepts for what these things can be used for over time. So for example, zhang, when you hear more and more people using zhang in different situations, you naturally start forming this idea that zhang is for approximately rectangular, generally flat things. So 
instead of trying to memorize 50 measure words and nouns, some of the nouns that can be used for, you need to also give yourself some time with this stuff. So hopefully this helped to dispel some of the mystery about measure words in Chinese, because we have them in English as well. Uh, but they are a little bit tricky. Give yourself some time with them. And uh, if you'd like to see more about measure words on our YouTube channel in the future, feel free to let me know. I'm always happy to help how I can. Thank you for watching.